All right, members, the House will come to order. Good looking group. Families here, it's, we welcome everybody. Members, our prayer is going to be led today by Mr. Arlen Blevins, who is a city councilman from Rainsville, Alabama. And Arlen, you have the floor, sir. Let us pray. Father God, we just come to you today, Lord, and uh, we just thank you so much for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace, God. And Lord, I just thank you for this group of people who have gathered here, Lord. We just uh, pray your blessings upon them, God. Uh, I thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you how you love us and take care of us. And God, again, I pray for this group of men and women who have come to serve in the House of Representatives. I pray that you would just bless them, give them wisdom, God, and most of all, God, I pray every decision they make and every word they speak would be pleasing to you, Father. Again, we thank you so much for all these men and women, and we just pray your blessings upon them. These things we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. And Arlen, thank you so much for being here and leading us in prayer. Members, today the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Mr. Deacon Ledbetter, Major Ledbetter, and Tripp Ledbetter. These are the grandchildren of the gentleman from DeKalb, Mr. Leader Ledbetter. So, boys, if y'all will get behind the mic and lead us in the pledge. Attention, pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. And members, before we call the roll, if you would permit me with just a moment of personal privilege, uh, I would appreciate that if there are no objections. Just wanted to make a uh, comment or two. As you know, today will be my last day here sitting in this chair as your speaker. And uh, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve you. It really has bittersweet day. I look around this room and I see faces of friends, friends and colleagues and people that uh, we've made a lot of memories with. I want to congratulate each of you, each of you as members of this body, the Alabama House of Representatives. You are now representing the people of this state and we call this the people's house. This chamber is called the people's house because of our representation. Of those people. I want to challenge you to take your duty very seriously. Respect each other. Respect our state and national constitution, which is the law of our land, and respect the legislative process of which you are a part of now. Remember you were elected to be a public servant of the people of this great state. Remember where you come from. Never get caught up in the business in Montgomery and you forget about those people that elected you and sent you here to this place to be their voice. The legislative process demands that this body operates and functions as a democracy. Never forget that. Never forget that. Especially in these times that we're in today. Representing the people and their needs and their concerns is what we're here for. We bring to this chamber our views and opinions, our political ideologies, the concerns and welfares of those that we represent. Do not grow weary in doing your work. Look for opportunities to allow the democratic process to be successful in this Republican form of government that we serve in. Reason with each other, debate the issues, and find solutions for the people. It is a rewarding experience when this legislative process works. When you sit from this viewpoint here and you see us in session, some people in the gallery may think 
they don't, what, what in the world are they doing down there? They're just running around like crazy. But when you see members go to other members and they have pieces of paper in their hand and a debate is happening on the floor and they're listening and they're talking and they're looking at amendments, that's the process at work. It's beautiful. It's rewarding to see that happen. Strive for that. Please strive for that. Because the people of this state demand it and expect it and are due that service from you. I ask for God's blessings on you. I will pray for you. I ask for God's blessings on your families because they are in this as well. This is not an I thing. This is a we thing. Your family is right there with you in all of this. You will be attacked just by mere fact of the political environment you, you function in. You will be attacked and there will be things written and said about you. Don't take that to heart. Just remember what your duty is and what you're here to do. And in our prayers, we ask for God's speed and his wisdom and his grace and above all, his peace to rest on you. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you. And at this point, the clerk will now read the certification of election results for the Alabama House of Representatives. I, John Merrill, Secretary of State of the State of Alabama, in accordance with the Code of Alabama, 1975, as amended, the results of the general election held on November 8, 2022, were opened and counted on November 28, 2022, and the results so tabulated show the duly elected members of the Alabama House of Representatives are as follows. Philip Pettis 1, Ben Harrison to Carrie Butt, Underwood 3, Parker Duncan Moore 4, Danny F. Crawford 5, Andy with 6, Ernie Yarbrough 7, Terry Collins 8, Scott Statagen 9, David Cole 10, Randall Shedd 11, Corey Hardison 12, Matt Woods 13, Timothy Tim Wadsworth 14, Lee Halsey 15, Kyle South 16, Tracy Estes 17, Jamie Keel 18, Laura Hall 19, James Lomax 20, Rex Retnolz 21, Richie Warden 22, Mike Kirkland 23, Nathaniel Led Better 24, Philip K. Riggs B25, Brock Colvin 26, West Kitchen 27, Mac and Butler 28, Mark Abedley 29, Craig Lipscomb, 30, Troy B. Stubbs, 31, Barbara Bigsby Boyd, 32, Ben Robbins, 33, David Standridge, 34, Steve Hurst, 35, Randy Wood, 36, Bob Fincher, 37, Debbie Ham, B. Wood, 38, Jeannie Shaver, 39, Chad Robertson, 40, Corley Ellis, 41, Van Smith, 42, Arnold Mooney, 43, Danny Garrett, 44, Susan Dubose, 45, David Faulkner, 46, Mike Shaw, 47, Jim Carnes, 48, Russell Bedsall, 49, Jim Hill, 50, Alan Trada, E. 51, John W. Rogers, Junior, 52, Anthony Daniels, 53, Neil Rafferty, 54, Fred Coach Plum, 55, Ontario J. Tillman, 56, Patrick Sellers, 57, Rolanda Hollis, 58, Mary Moore, 59, Juan Alin Given, 60, Ron Bolton, 61, Bill Lamb, 62, Cynthia Lee Almond, 63, Donna Gibbons, 64, Brett Easterbrook, 65, Alan Baker, 66, Prince Chestnut, 67, Thomas E. Action Jackson, 68, Calvin J. Lawrence, 69, Christopher John England, 70, Artis A.J. McCampbell, 71, Curtis L. Travis, 72, Kenneth Pascoe, 73, Philip Insella, 74, Craig Ingram 75, Patrice Penny McClammy 76, Tasha Morris 77, Ken Yip Hassel 78, Joe Love Bjorn 79, Chris E. Blackshear 80, Ed Oliver 81, Peblin Walker Warren 82, Jeremy Gray 83, Barry Forte 84, Rick Ram 85, Paul W. Lee 86, Jeff Sarles 87, Jerry Starnes 88, Marcus B. Paramore 89, Chris Sells 90, Red Marks 91, Matthew Hammett 92, Steve Klaus 93, Jennifer Fiddler 94, Francis Hope Jones 95, Matt Simpson 96, Badline Clark 97, Napoleon Bracey Junior 98, Sam Jones 99, Mark Shire 100, Chris Pringle 101, Shane Stringer 102, Barbara Drummond 103, Margie Wilcox 100 for and Chip Brown 105. In testimony were I've, I have here unto set my hand and affix the great seal of the state at the Capitol in the city of Montgomery on this day. November 27, 2018. Date. John H. Merrill. Secretary of State. Okay, members, as we go through the certification process on the elections, I would ask for all legislative members now to rise, all House of Representative members to rise. If you have a Bible with you, place your left hand on the Bible and hold up your right hand and let me give you a ceremonial oath of office. I, and state your name. 
do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Alabama so long as I continue a citizen thereof and that I will faithfully and honestly discharge the duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations, T. And the clerk will call the roll. Almond, Baker, Bedsell, Blackshire, Bolton, Boyd, Bracey, Brown, Butler, Carnes, Chestnut, Clark, Klaus, Cole, Collins, Colvin, Crawford, Daniels, Drummond, DuBose, Easterbrook, Ellis, England, Insland, Estes, Faulkner, Fiddler, Fincher, Fort, Garrett, Gidley, Gavan, Gibbons, Gray, Hall, Hammett, Harbison, Harrison, Hassel, Hill, Hulk, Jones, Hollis, Halsey, Hurst, Ingram, Jackson, Jones, Keel, Kirkland, Kitchens, Lamb, Lawrence, Lee, Lipscomb, Lomax, Lovern, Marcus, McCampbell, McClammy, Mooney, Moore M, Moore P, Morris, Oliver, Paramore, Pascal, Pettis, Plump, Bringle, Rafferty, Bream, Reynolds, Rigsby, Robbins, Robertson, Rogers, Sellers, Sells, Shaver, Shaw, Shedd, Shirey, Simpson, Smith, Sorrells, South, Stahagen, Standridge, Starnes, Stringer, Stubbs, Tillman, Travis, Treadaway, Underwood, Wadsworth, Warren, Witt, Wharton, Wilcox, Wood D, Wood R, Woods, Yarborough. All right, there are 104 members having answered a roll. A quorum is present, and the House is in a position to conduct business. All right, members. As we start into the business section, at this time, the floor is open for nominations for Speaker of the Alabama House of Representatives. And the chair recognizes the gentleman from Coma, Representative Shedd. We're about to. Speaker McCutcheon, members and staff of the Alabama House of Representatives and fellow Alabamians, today it is my distinct honor to place a nomination for Speaker of the House, a man who is a true leader, a public servant who has proved it in a quiet and humble way throughout his life of public service with a remarkable track record of success. First and foremost, he is a man of faith, a Christian. A husband of 42 years, he married his high school sweetheart. They courted in the halls of their high school, and now they continue their journey together today in the halls of the State House. Uh, speaker McCutcheon, it just occurred to me we'll have a new speaker at the Speaker's House. He is a proud father of two sons, even more proud of his four grandchildren. He is a patriotic American who believes freedom, the constitutions, and the rule of law are worth fighting for. He has a quiet demeanor, yet a firm grip on life. He is slow to anger, yet quick to, to action with firm direction. He's a man who understands the working men and women of Alabama. Before he became a successful small businessman, he worked until his retirement in all kinds of weather, doing his part to keep the lights on as a lineman at the electric cooperative. He understands what it's like to make his own community better. He served his neighbors as a small town mayor. Being a small town mayor teaches you to listen. He and his wife understand challenges of owning and operating a small business. 
He knows what it's like to herd cats as a majority leader. He knows how to lead the party while at the same time reaching out to the other side of the aisle to accomplish the best compromise possible while making sure neither side is required to compromise principles. He's a man of compassion. While we are, many were afraid to address the mental health crisis in Alabama, he took the lead. More work is to be done, but tremendous progress has been made. He's a man of integrity. His handshake is as good as a written contract. He's the legislature, legislator that kept the broadband fire burning in the Alabama House and saw it through passage. He's the man that has firmly put everyone on notice that this year we will pass legislation to streamline the adoption process so foster children can have a loving forever family and home sooner rather than later. You've already heard him say education is the priority. He's determined Alabama will move from too low rankings in education to national championship rankings in education. I believe he will lead the Alabama House of Representatives with fairness, integrity, transparency, and we will have a very productive four years. It is my honor to place in nomination for Speaker of the Alabama House of Representatives, my friend, the gentleman from DeKalb, Representative Nathaniel Ledbetter. All right. All right, members, the gentleman from Coleman has nominated the gentleman from DeKalb, Mr. Ledbetter, for the position of speaker. Do I hear a second? The chair recognizes the gentleman from Lee County, Mr. Lovern. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and as the gentleman from Lee, it is my distinct honor to second the nomination for the gentleman of the cab, our friend, the good gentleman, Representative Ledbetter. All right, thank you, Representative Lovern. And now the gentleman from Lee seconds that nomination for Ledbetter for Speaker. Are there any others seeking recognition? Seeing none, then let's move on. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Morgan, Leader Stadag. Mr. Speaker, I move the nominations for Speaker be closed. All right, members, the movement now is for the nominations for Speaker to be closed. All in favor, say aye. All opposed. And the nominations for Speaker are closed. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Now the reading clerk will call the roll, and the members will rise and cast their vote for the Speaker via a voice vote. Mr. Clerk. Almond. <laughs> that that helps everybody understand how we're going here. That's right. Good. Sounds good. All right. All right, Mr. Clerk, let's continue. Baker. Bedsoul, Blackshear, Bolton, Boyd, Bracy, Brown, Butler. Butler, Carnes, Chestnut, Clark, Klaus, Cole, Collins, Colvin, Crawford, Daniels, Drummond, Dubos, De 
Easterbrook, Ellis, England, Ensler, Estes, Faulkner, Fedler, Fincher, Fort, Garrett, Gidley, Gavan, Gibbons, Gray, Hall, Hammett, Harbison, Harrison, Hassel, Hill, Hulk Jones, Hollis, Halsey, Hurst, Ingram, Jackson, Jones, Keel, Kirkland, Kitchens, Lamb, Lawrence, Lee Lipscomb Lomax Lovern Marcus McCampbell McCampbell McClammy, Mooney, Moore M, Moore M, Moore P, Morris, Oliver. Paramore, Pascal, Pettis, Plump, Pringle, Rafferty. Bream, Reynolds, Rigsby, Robbins, Robertson, Rogers, Sellers, Sells, Shaver, Shaw, 
Shed. Shirey. Simpson. Smith. Sorrells. South. Stahagen. Standridge. Starnes. Stringer. Stubbs. Pillman. Travis. Treadaway. Underwood. Wadsworth. Warren. Whit. Wharton. Wilcox. Wood D. Wood R. Woods. Yarborough. And the vote count, 102 votes for the Honorable Nathaniel Ledbetter, the gentleman from DeKalb, Representative Ledbetter, is elected as Speaker of the Alabama House of Representatives. And the chair recognizes Representative Garrett to come and take the chair. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Madison, Speaker McCutcheon, to administer the oath of office to Speaker Ledbetter.
First of all, I'd like to thank my wife of 42 years. And uh, certainly would like to recognize and thank my two sons, Nathan and Nick, and the husband and the fathers that they have become. And my grandchildren that you've seen on the floor, uh, aren't they something else? <laughs> you can clap for grandkids. I love that. Part. I still believe for them I'm probably the best backyard quarterback in Alabama right now. Roll Tide, by the way, Chris. And War Eagle. I got to say both now. That's what I've been told. Yeah, War Eagle. Yeah. Francis, did I get that right? Okay. All right. There you go. You know, one thing I, I want to recognize, too, it's uh, very humbling that we've had so many people from DeKalb County, from my home county, to be here. And I'd like for them to stand up. I think there's 40, 30, or 40 people that drove three hours to be here for this. Thank you all so much. It's very humbling and appreciated, and I want you to know that. Well, it goes without saying. Without you guys, I would not be here. I stand before you today a man is humbled by the faith you have put in me and the great responsibility you have placed upon my shoulders. I pledge to you here and now to work as hard as I'm able to justify both. Many of you have heard me say it thousands of times over, but the men and women I serve with and alongside in this chamber, both past and present, are some of the finest and most dedicated individuals it has been my honor to know. All of us who answer the call of duty and hold the title of state representative serve with one common purpose in mind, to make an already great state even greater. From time to time, we'll have different ideals and suggestions different paths to achieve a mission. But it's a mission all of us share. I understand that the speaker's, speaker's gavel is not a weapon. It's a tool. To be used to encourage honest debate, find common ground, and represent the constituents that each of us seek to serve. Each time we enter the chamber, we pass by the phrase that is so important. It was carved into the seal of the Alabama House of Representatives, Vox People I, which means the voice of the people. I intend to let those voices be heard, not through political grandstanding, but through open and fair and constructive debate. We're going to treat each other with the respect and dignity that every official duly elected under the Constitution of Alabama deserves. We've made great improvements in public education over the past several years. Classroom spending is a record level. Proration has become a dusty relic. And we've placed renewal emphasis on literacy and STEM instruction. But we can do more. We've helped create over 65,000 new jobs, attracted over $45 billion in investment, and supercharged Alabama's economy as never before in our state's history. But we can do more. We've brought the miracle of high-speed broadband internet to rural areas that struggle with frustration of dial-up service and antiquated technology for far too long. But we can do more. We've toughened the fight against crime and begin the battle of the evil of fentanyl, which has caused so much pain for our families, friends, and neighbors. But we can do more. We've opened the doors to mental health treatment for those Alabamians who struggle on a daily basis, desperately seeking measure of hope. But we can do more. And while we've streamlined the process for private adoption agencies to operate within the state, too many children still crave the sense of security that only a stable home 
and loving parents provide, we have got to do more. A reporter asked me recently if I ever imagined growing up in DeKalb County that one day I would become Speaker of the House. I told that gentleman, I said, when I was growing up in DeKalb, I didn't even know what the Speaker of the House was. But I do now. And it's likely one of the greatest honors that will ever be afforded me in the time God grants me on earth. Second Philippians verse 3 and 4 tells us, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but the interest of others. I encourage all of us to take those words from the holiest book to heart and let them guide us in the committee rooms, the corridors, and the chamber of the Alabama State House. Together, we can take Alabama to its highest heights. I look forward to working with each of you to make that happen. May God bless all of us, and may God bless our sweet home, Alabama. It's time to go to work, right? Mr. Speaker, McCutcheon, I, I want to say something about my friend, Mike McCutcheon. He's one of the most honorable and decent men I've ever met. And it's been a true honor to serve under your leadership. And God bless you and your family. Uh, you're like friends to me and Teresa, and we love you. You know that. We do want to recognize the Speaker of the House, Miss Debbie McCutcheon, of the Speaker's House, right? And his and granddaughter Avery. Let's give Avery a big hand. Thank y'all for being here today. The floor is now open for nominations for Speaker Pro Tem of the Alabama House. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Meadowall County, Representative Lipscomb. Thank you, Speaker Ledbetter. I'm Craig Lipscomb of Alabama House District 30, serving St. Clair County and Etowah counties. Today I have the honor to make the Republican nomination for Speaker Pro Tem of the House of Representatives. Representative Chris Pringle of Mobile represents Alabama House District 101. Born in Birmingham, Chris graduated from the University of Alabama, receiving a Bachelor's of Arts in Communications. He also graduated from the American Campaign Academy in Washington, D.C. In his professional life, Chris is a real estate agent and a talented contractor. As a complement to this, he has additionally served on numerous political campaigns and on the congressional staffs of Congressman Jack Edwards and Sonny Callahan. 
Representative Pringle first won election to the Alabama House of Representatives in 1994, and he served until 2002, at which time he vacated that seat. In 2014, he ran for his former seat, once again, and he was promptly reelected, proudly serving his constituents to this day, giving him an impressive 16 year long career serving the people of Alabama. Chris is a straight shooter, a steadfast colleague, and most importantly, he's a dear friend. So with that, Mr. Speaker, colleagues, it is my honor to nominate my friend, Representative Chris Pringle, to be our new speaker, our new speaker pro tem of the Alabama House of Representatives. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Fayette, representing the South. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the recognition. It is an honor to stand before you, the body of the House of Representatives, and second the nomination of my friend, Chris Pringle, for Speaker Pro Tem. The gentleman from Fayette second the nomination, Mr. Pringle. Other members seeking recognition? The chair recognizes the gentleman from Montgomery, Representative Ingram. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for recognition. I move that the nominations for Speaker Pro Tem be closed at this time. Mr. Representative Ingram moves that the nomination for Speaker Pro Tem be closed. All in favor of the motion, say aye. All opposed, say no. Motion has it. Floor is closed. The clerk will call the roll and the members will rise and cast their vote for the speaker pro tem. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Pringle. Almond. Baker. Bedsole. Blackshear. Bolton, Boyd, Bracy, Brown, Butler, Butler, Carnes, Chestnut. Clark, Klaus, Cole, Collins, Colvin, Crawford, Daniels, Drummond, Dubos, Easterbrook, Ellis, England, Insler, Estes, Faulkner, Fiddler, Fincher, Fort, Garrett, Gidley, Gavan,
Gibbons. Gray. Hall. Hall. Hammett. Harbison. Harrison. Hassel. Hill. Hulk Jones. Hollis. Halsey. Hurst. Hurst. Ingram. Jackson. Jones. Keel. Kirkland. Kitchens. Lamb. Lawrence. Lee. Lipscomb. Lomax. Lovern. Marcus. McCampbell. McCampbell. McClammy. Mooney. Moore M. More M. More P. Morse. Oliver. Paramore. Pascal. Pettis. Plump. Pringle, Pringle, Rafferty, Ream, Reynolds, Rigsby, Robbins, Robertson, Rogers, Sellers, Sells, Shaver, Shaw, Shed, Shirey. Simpson, Smith, Sorrells, South, Stahagen, Standridge, Starnes, Stringer, Stubbs, Tillman, Travis, Treadaway, Underwood, Wadsworth, Wadsworth, Warren. Whit, Horton, Wilcox, 
Would D. Would R. Woods. Yabra. The vote for Mr. Pringle is 102. The gentleman from Mobile, Mr. Pringle, has been elected Speaker Pro Tem of the Alabama House. Congratulations. Chair recognizes the gentleman from DeKalb to administer the oath of office to Speaker Pro Tem Pringle. Recognize first. All right. First, let me uh, let me say thank you so much. I remember sitting in that chair in January of 1995, never imagining for a moment that I would become the pro tem of the Alabama House of Representatives. So it's it's been a long time. It's been a long journey, and I can honestly say I've enjoyed every bit of it. It's uh, you will find serving in this body, you will make friends that you just, they become lifelong friends, and you will enjoy your service here. But before I go any further, I want to introduce my, my mother, Billy Pringle, and my beautiful girlfriend, Laura Meganson. So when y'all get mad at me, she raised me. I did a good job. She turned out well. I raised, I raised her well. But, you know, serving in this body, you meet some unique people like Miss Gavan, and you make some lifetime friends. <laughs> my sweet mate, who I, my seatmate, who I just love and adore. Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, sitting next to you for all these years, and I'm not going far. I'm going to be right there with you. <laughs> I'm going to be brief and just tell you how excited I am and to pledge my support to the Speaker of the Alabama House. I don't think we could have elected a better man to be Speaker, and I'm proud to serve with you. But most importantly, I'm proud of how fast we were able to do this, unlike some of our colleagues on the other side of the nation. Uh, but I tell you right now, standing there, that was a long roll call vote. <laughs> but anyway, thank you so much. I look forward to working with each one of you and getting to know you. I'm open. My door is open. If you have any questions, please come talk to me. If you want to hear stupid stories about the past, come listen to my, me tell the stories. Uh, I always enjoy talking to my colleagues and working with you, and I'll help you in any way possible. Again, thank you for this honor. I never, ever, ever imagined sitting in that chair all those years ago that I would ever be the pro tem of the House. Mr. Speaker, thank you, and I look forward to working with you.
Members, the floor of the House is now open for nominations for position of the Clerk of the Alabama House of Representatives. The Chair recognizes the gentleman from Mobile, Mr. Pringle. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to nominate for Clerk of the House, Mr. John Treadwell. Mr. Pringle has promptly submitted the name of John Treadwell for clerk. I hear second. Mr. Pringle, I mean, Mr. <laughs> Speaker, I proudly, I proudly second the nomination of Mr. John Treadwell, a very fair-minded man. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Drummond. Mr. Drummond is second to the nomination of John Treadwell. Are there any other members seeking recognition? The chair recognizes the gentleman from St. Clair. Representative Hill. Mr. Speaker, I move that the nominations be closed. Mr. Hill has moved for the nominations for Kirk to be closed. All in favor of that motion, say yay. All opposed, no. The yeah, yeays have it. The clerk will call the roll. The members will rise and cast their vote for the clerk of the Alabama House via voice. Mr. Speaker. I represent uh, Mr. Treadwell. Allman, Baker, Bedsoul, Blackshear, Bolton, Boyd, Bracey, Brown, Butler, Butler, Carnes, Chestnut, Clark, Klaus, Cole, Collins, Calvin, Crawford, Daniels, Drummond, Demos, Easterbrook, Ellis, England, Ensler, Estes, Faulkner, Fiddler, Fincher, Fort, Garrett, Gidley, Gavan, Givens, Gray, Hall, Hammett, Harbison, Harrison, Hassel, Hill, Hulk Jones, Hollis, Halsey, Hurst, Hurst, Ingram, Jackson, Jones, Keel, Kirkland, Kitchens, Lamb, Lawrence, Lee, Lipscomb, Lomax, Lovern, Marcus, 
McCampbell. McCampbell. McClammy. Mooney. More M. More P. Morris. Oliver. Paramore. Pascal. Pettis. Plump. Pringle. Rafferty. Ream. Reynolds. Rigsby. Robbins. Robertson. Rogers. Sellers. Sells. Shaver. Shaw. Shed. Shirey. Simpson. Smith. Sorrells. South. Stadhagen. Standridge. Starnes. Stringer. Stubbs. Tillman. Travis. Redaway. Underwood. Wadsworth. Warren. Whit. Wharton. Wilcox. Wood D. Wood R. Woods. Yarbrough. The vote is 103 votes for Mr. Treadwell. John Treadwell has been elected the clerk of the Alabama House. Let's give him a big hand. The chair recognizes the Speaker of the House, Mr. Ledbetter, to administer the oath of office to the clerk.
The chair recognizes the gentleman from Mobile, Speaker Pro Tem Pringle, for the purpose of making announcements. Ms. Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a couple announcements. <clears throat> uh, anybody that has a truck parked in the parking space, you need to get with Representative Pettis. Where is he? He's in here. If you have a truck downstairs, we need you need to get with uh, the Committee on uh, Internal Affairs. Uh, all of you will have a, a, a king cake in your office. If not, the, the, the extras are in Representative Wilcox's office. Okay, y'all, what office number is yours, Marge? I can't remember. 417J, you'll have an invitation to come to a Mardi Gras celebration in my hometown, Laissez La Bon Temps Roulet. Uh, also, RSA Activity Center from 5 to 7, all members and their family, there's a reception. Uh, your composite picture. 54 people have not had their picture made. They will be there today until 4 o'clock. If you have not had your picture made, you will not be on the composite. So I strongly suggest you get your picture made. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I move that we stand in adjournment and reconvene on Wednesday, January the 11th, 2023 oh, 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 at one. Oh, oh, oops, oops, oops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I would draw that motion. I'll move the table. <laughs> First day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Speaker, uh, excuse me. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I got two more announcements. If you have not updated your contact information, please go by the clerk's office room 504 today and give the new information to the staff. That way they can put out all the, all the guides for us. Committee assignments will be announced on Friday, January the 13th. Office assignments, chamber seating, and parking assignments will be announced after January the 16th. Upstairs, hey, it's that room right up there. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Mobile, Speaker Pro Tem Pringle. Mr. Speaker, I have a resolution notifying the Senate of organization of the House and ready to transact business. The Kirk received a resolution. Explain resolution, Mr. Pringle. House resolution number one, notice to the Senate of organization of the House and readiness to transact business. Mr. Speaker, I have a further resolution uh, come, uh, come on to. Uh, That's where you okay. Are. I'm offering notif notifies the Senate and the House as organizers and ready to conduct business. Question. Okay. Yeah, we got to adopt that. I, I, I move to adopt the resolution. Motion to adopt. I hear the ayes for adopting the resolution. Any noes? Ayes have it. The resolution's adopted. The chair further recognizes the pro Tim representing Pringle. Mr. Speaker, I have a resolution. The clerk will receive the resolution.
Mr. Pringle, can you explain uh, res House Joint House Joint Resolution Number Two, Committee appointed to notify the Governor of the Legislature is in session. Mr. Speaker, this this resolution and members of the House creates a committee to notify the Governor that the House is in session. With that, I move adoption of the resolution. I hear adoption. Eyes for adopting a resolution. The nays. The ayes have it. The resolution has been adopted. Appoint him. The chair appoints the House committee to notify the governor that the House is in session. The gentleman from Franklin, Mr. Kill, the lady from Tuscaloosa, which I remembered her name, Miss Almon. <laughs> and the lady from Mobile, Miss Drummond. <laughs> the chair recognizes a gentleman from Mobile, Mr. Pringle. Mr. Speaker, I have a resolution. The clerk will receive the resolution. Mr. Speaker, members of the House Joint Resolution such a joint session for the purpose of publishing the election results for the constitutional officers and sets the session for January 11th, 2023 at 1.30 p.m. The question for the body is the adoption of the HJR. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? And the ayes have it. Resolution has been adopted. The chair further recognizes the gentleman from Mobile, Mr. Pringle. Mr. S Mr. Speaker, I have a resolution. The clerk will receive the resolution. House joint resolution designating the offices of the House Majority Leader, the House Minority Leader, and ranking minority committee members. Mr. Pringle, explain resolution. Mr. Speaker, it's it, it, it resolution designating the position of House Majority Leader and House Minority Leader, as well as ranking minority members. With that, I move adoption of the resolution. The question before the body is adoption of the resolution. All those in favor say aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. It has been adopted. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Lee County, Chairman Lover. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have a resolution. The clerk will receive the resolution. House resolution adopting the rules of the Alabama House of Representatives. Ms. Levin, please explain the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. House resolution I just filed was for the House rules. We're adopting with any updates and changes. And at this time, I'll go through some of those summaries and answer any questions that may come from the body. You should be passed, we can pass out to you one, a copy of said uh, rules, and then a copy of a summary for any rules. And at the top, it'll show new rules. And then phase two will show repeal rules, and then phase three, be changes to existing rules. So I'm going to go through these rules and then we'll come back if, if the body, if the speaker allow for questions at the end as we refer back. First of all, for rule 40-1 requires the nomination for House of Election to be seconded. It just puts it in standard for a nomination and a second of that nomination. Rule 61 provides that the speaker may designate members to perform duties and responsibilities to assist in the efficient administration of house business. Rule 69 requires that all amendments to a bill adopted in a committee included amendments to a substitute be engrossed into a committee and substitute for consideration by the body on the floor. So instead of a point where you would have to revote for each amendment based on the committee, you'd have a clearly spelled out bill that would be adopted with the, any amendments highlighted in that bill. And what I emailed out to you was an example of what that bill would look like. And that's one change that I'm very excited to make, hopefully your life easier as we work through these bills. Repeal of Rule 81, an antiquated requirement that the clerk immediately 
photocopy the original of a bill to be designated as a second official copy. This is no longer in practice by the clerk due to the availability of electronic copies of original bills. So that's just updated to antiquated rule. Existing rules, technical changes, and substance changes are listed below. Under Rule 1, provides for those of individuals who may be admitted to the House floor in a session. The proposal would clarify that officers and employees of the Legislative Services Agency are afforded floor privileges. Clarify the former members of the House are afforded floor privileges as authorized by the Speaker and specify that the clerk may set limitations on placement of the media. Rule six provides for the order house of business. We have everybody a little quieter so we can listen to the rule changes and everybody understands them. Uh, the new uh, chairman, no, no, not right now, chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Rule six provides that the order for, for the order of the House business proposed change for one member of the delegation, if there is a standing committee for that delegation, by the greater of two members or 20% of the members of the delegation that has a standing committee, or by 11 members who are not members of a delegation representing a county affected by the proposed local bill. And where that would be is if you have a county delegation committee, it would take two or 20% the greater of those to be able to contest your local bill from within, or if it's from outside your county, or if you're wanting to contest an issue that is in another county, it would take 11 members to do that allocation. And where that 11 number comes from is we already have it in line with 11 to have something removed for our existing consent calendar. Rule 65 provides for the standing committees of the House by name, the promotion change will be to delete the Committee of Technology and Research and create the Committee on Ports, Waterways, and Intermodal Transit. Under that committee, you'd have subcommittees of local constitutional amendments and under local legislation. Rule 73 provides the notice requirements for meetings for standing committees. The proposed language will require the notice uh, notice boards no longer currently used would not have to be required. Provide for a four hour notice of committee meetings during a special session and provide for a six hour notice of committee meetings during regular sessions after the 20th legislative day for bills received from the Senate on or after the 20th legislative day. And as we all know, as we get closer to the end of the session, this will Rule change will hopefully expedite and set a minimum standard, a goal of, of time allowance for, without suspending the rules for a committee to meet, to conduct the House's business. And Rule 82 provides for notations of the passage of bills by the clerk. The proposed change would require that any dissent to bills be submitted by the end of the following legislative day after the bill receives final passage and may not exceed five single spaced pages. And if there's no further questions, I move for adoption, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We've got a, uh, some lights on. At this time, I'm going to recognize Representative Cavan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And although we are in an organizational session, I, I want to make sure that we start off right. I believe if we start off right, and, and, and I'll do respect to you, I know it's your first day on the job. You and I have had some conversations, and I'm going to keep my promise. But I want to do things in order because we have freshmen here, and we have some folks that are just coming into this chamber. But we have the clerk who's just duly elected. So I have to get make sure I've, I want to do things right, to be fair to you. I call for a point of order. And a point of order, and I want to ask for a parliamentary procedure question to the clerk with your permission. I have to ask you this because you are the clerk, the chair. So I have to ask the clerk, Thank you. based upon parliamentary rules, 
It's the procedure. If I'm at not a, not, I'm asking for a point of order. What is the procedure when asking, regardless of the chair? What is the procedure when I'm asking for a point of order versus a point of personal procedure? What is the procedure? At this time, we're speaking on what's germane to this subject. I, but I no, I asked you when I came. You need to ask the clerk offline. Okay, I, I did so well. I asked the clerk offline, and he said that at the point that you asked for a point of order, the chair should recognize the point of order. So, I, I, again, I just wanted to do that because I don't want to dare disrespect the chair, but I did ask for the point of order because I wanted to get clarity. And the point of order simply was just to ask, are we, are we addressing joint rules at this time, or are we addressing our own house rules? You asking me or this speaker? I guess at right. this point I'm asking you. I, I'm speaker, if I can direct to her, this is for the house rules, and we'll adopt and address joint rules tomorrow. So, okay, and, and, yes, and that's all I was just trying to get a point of order. I wasn't the only one. We just wanted to get the clarity as to what we were doing. So, so this is Absolutely. our own house rules. So my question is, did you come up with this set of rules or your committee? What we had existing rules and what uh -huh. we looked at is what, how are better ways for us to be transparent, be efficient in conducting the state's business and move through and update any, update any antiquated items like some postings that don't exist and digital copies that can be obtained now. And just to update, each time a quadrillion comes in, they look at those rules, they adopt, see what's working, what could be improved, and move forward. And so uh, these were taken with some suggestions from legislative services, from the clerk's offices of how we could look at try to trim up where our rules were to make them clearer for members and clearer for the people we serve. So that's, and this was the ones that we felt like were worth addressing and, and would, would make our, our, our process work better. Okay. Okay. Cause I, I just wanted to get declared. I have some concerns. The rules are going to be what they're going to be. I'm not here to debate because look, I, as I've stated, I've been here three terms. I, I understand numbers. I can count. I'm not here. I'm not going to pitch a fit over what y'all do down here. I have bigger bigger and better things I've got to deal with. When I stand here at this microphone, I'm going to rate, say, state my case, and I'll say what I have to say, and I'm done with it. A, my health and my mindset is, is one at this point where I'm not going to sit here and, and kill myself over all of this foolery. It is what it is. That's number one. But I have a concern when we, I think it's only my biggest issue is one one of these rules, and I think it's the one, I think it's, it's rule seven dealing with the Senate, and when we get a message from the Senate, is that, is, did I see that earlier? I, I have a problem. Did, did I see a bill, uh, uh, a rule change dealing with receiving Senate messages and that we would make that message a priority? Is that rule seven? Uh, rule seven? Uh, am I correct? I thought I saw, I might have the rule, rule number wrong and that we would make, stop and make that rule. And, and I'm, I'm just going to say this, Mr. Mr. Speaker, if you don't mind. I remember the day, and, and it's fine that we would make those rules, those bills and those, those priority. But I remember a day that everything, we didn't drop just everything for the Senate. So I want to make sure that just as we would amend the rule to make sure that everything that comes down here for the Senate, I just want to know, are we making that type of, are we having that discussion with anyone upstairs in the upper chamber around rules or bills or when our Senate bills make it upstairs, especially when we get close to signing die? Is that a part of the discussion? You're asking about rule seven. Yes. Which would address the fact of taking a conference debate to one hour. And so that would take it when we have a message from the Senate and establish a conference, then the com committee in that conference board would be one hour. So it's debate. only dealing with the conference debate 
to one hour and not just stopping everything and moving straight into receiving that message from the Senate and addressing that particular bill? Because that's not how I read it. Okay. I just want to say I'll get you clarity on that. I'm just trying to get clarity on that bill. Yeah, any message, a concurrence, or would be subject to that one-hour debate from the Senate. So we need to get the. I, I'm I'm confused on that particular bill. Yeah. Okay. On that try to take our debate times and align them. So it's the only matchup. dealing with the debate okay. of of that particular Senate message or bill that okay. may come down. Is what you're saying? Yes, ma'am. Any message from the Senate? Only the timing that we would allot toward addressing that Senate bill. Right. We put that debate at one hour. And it we would only give that one hour to that Senate message. Yes, ma'am. I, that, I, that's not okay. I, I'm I'm sort of I'm kind of confused on it. I, I I'm not. I'll just have to go back and read. I appreciate you taking taking my question on it. I'm somewhat confused. My other issue is dealing with the 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 contestation of local bills, and how did we get to that magic number of one versus eleven with regards to contestation of a local bill? Good question. The the eleven is would be contested if you're outside the delegation. Like, I, for instance, I'm not in Jefferson County where you are. If I wanted to contest your local bill in Jefferson County, then I would have to get eleven people to be able to contest that bill. I couldn't just contest that. Well, why on, would on. somebody outside of Jefferson County or why would I want to contest a bill from another county? And why would I delve deep into someone else's local bills well the debate process gets complicated sometimes so you're well aware. Is, is this because of what the former representative i think haynes or somebody did last year i know we had a couple of issues that arose and so is this as a, as it relates to that particular incident so now we punish the body for that i'm this, this is no intention for punishment. This is where one representative, say Representative Lovern, couldn't file one contest for, for your local bill in Jefferson County by myself and affect you so a step in a lot of ways to help protect you with your legislation. So it streamlines it. If you have one person that has an issue, then that could be a personal issue that someone's working out with a member. But if, when you put it at 11, then that's an established movement that there's enough people, there's a further issue that it leads to more discussion. But, okay, like I said, my, my biggest issue, I just want to, just the clarity again, I'm not here to try to fight this battle on, on these rules. You know, at this point, they are what they are. You know, it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm just, I just, I, that rule seven gives me pause. Um, and then, of course, dealing with these local bills, you know, this issue about cutting off debate, I still believe, you know, I heard several times that this is the people's house, and it is the people's house. And, and, our, and our constituency base it expects us to be able to come down here to have their, have their voices represented through our voices. Um, in a manner, I've heard the word decorum used, you know, that's fine, we, we can work through that, but I do want to be able to come into this house and have my voice heard and to be able to represent the people who sent me down here to represent them and having a time allotted to be able to do that. And every time we come here, it's being cut off more and 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 we're we still have an opportunity to move legislation out of this house general ladies time is up the chair recognizes uh, representative rogers from jefferson county Oh, feeling good.
How you doing? Great, Mr. Rogers. How are you? I was sitting back there, and I'm going to speak and hear this, because I was sitting back and looking at the rule changes, and the question I got to ask is this, is that say in a, a local committee that uh, they have to build I don't like, and I want to, and I want to, I, I want to contest that bill. All right, if I contest that bill, all they got to do is go get 11 members outside of Jefferson County, or, or, uh, and, 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 and I can't contest it, right? Uh, you can contest, if, it, if you're in Jefferson County, right. and you want to contest a local Jefferson County bill, you right. can, however, you will need two members or 20%, whichever is greater, oh, oh, to be able to contest that local bill from well, the delegation. Well, that's, that's a record. We usually had to get four people to decide for a solid contest where it used to be, I want to speak to hear this, you had to get four members to lock it down completely. And I don't know if y'all have changed that. And the way we did it in the past, I don't know if it, I don't like speaker has changed that. In the past, on a local bill contest, Mr. Speaker, four people of a delegation is solidly locked down on a bill contest. Period. Has that, has that been changed? You're saying two, but it, because in the past, four members in the delegation can, can solidly lock down a contested bill. Now, I don't see where that's been changed at all. So then, are you telling me that even though four people are signed on with a solid contest and local bill with you and, and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, that's I mean, Mr. The clerk, Mr. Clerk, I'm asking the clerk, clerk needs to hear this too. Mr. Clerk, what's your question? He, he's facing out, Mr. Uh, Price. Hey, what's Mr. your question? Fairway. Uh, Fairway. I know so many ways, Fairway, Fairway. Uh, anyway, now in the past, where it's always been. In a, in a local delegation, if four members contest a bill, you lock the bill down to you, to you work it out in, any, in that local delegation. Now, are you telling me that that's, I don't see where that's addressed, that's changed now that they could go get 11 members outside the delegation, including the members in the delegation, which is uh, 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 including 11, to lock down a, a, a contest a bill. Now, you you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. The committee process will stay the same. It's where the contesting on the floor would be where the change would be. So the committee process would stay the same. Okay. All right. All right. That's what that's, that's that's good with me. I don't want to know. And the other uh, other question I got is is, is this is that. I've been looking at all the rules, and um, uh, I don't want to have to concern, but one the eleven member thing. I right, if a uh, if you have a, a bill that's if you have a, you have a, a bill that, that the rules are considered on, that's okay, no controversy on. They you you get twelve members signed on. They can take a bill all the consent calendar. That's still in, in effect. You have 11 members. No, no, off. it's 12. It, 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 it rules. If you bring a bill that's consent calendar, that's on the consent calendar, and everybody had no problem with it, any member right now can go get 12 members and take a, a bill that's uncontested and off the calendar. That's where it, 11. No, to, to 12. Uh, 11. It's 11. That's where we got the number for this change was to match the existing rule for 11. You could get 12, but it just would require 11. Okay. Because I had a problem with that last last term. Okay. But I can deal with my problem, so I ain't, I ain't worried about it. So, so, But that's still in effect that any member can get 11 on a consent calendar bill to knock that bill being on a consent calendar. Even though they have no reason, they just want to do it for the hell of it. That's what happened to me now. So I... So I that's still in effect. Well, well, all right. The other question I got, say for instance, uh, uh, you can bring a bill, all right, uh, when y'all in, in committee now, you can put more pressure on committee to bring a bill out that's solid. 
So if you uh, do a substitute bill in committee, with all the members on there, and you bring it out of committee, do I still have a chance to add, no, I, to debate that, I can debate that, that the seat of the debate on the bill, right? You know? Absolutely, it doesn't take away your right to debate. In fact, you can file an amendment to pull anything out that was engrossed in that bill, just like the amendment was put okay. in there once I, it gets to the floor. I, I, I thank y'all for getting something. I ain't gonna remind you what you forgot. Cause I'm a, hey, Mr. Speaker, I'm not gonna remind you what you forgot when you did that, cause I'm gonna use it again later on down in the session. Wow. I know what you're trying to do, but there's a way around that one, easy. So, so I, I, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna adopt that one, cause the fact that when I saw it, I saw a loophole in that and I ran away. See, cause so, so now, but you still not preventing something. You're not preventing people from stacking the amendments. You can still stack amendments on that. From the floor, you got to take amendments, and I can address the amendment all day long, even though you bring it out of committee, I'm not on the committee. If I'm not on the committee, I got to be a committee on the floor or one. So if I, if you bring in, you bring in those, all those changes in committee, but I still get a chance to stack them on the floor. I, I think y'all forgot that. I'm, I'm, I'm not reminding you, I should remind you what you, what you forgot, because I think it's a good, I mean, I can use that one all day, but, but y'all don't talk about it. No, no something about how do your rules do, but you didn't you, you're not preventing stacking. What you what you're trying to do, you ain't doing. You're trying to prevent stacking, but you that that only helps you stack them. You know what I'm talking about? I do. And did you see the sample bill where they can I, now I, have I, the I, highlight I, option? I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, all hey, I, I'm not gonna tell you what I know. I, I know I I can't help you. I want to help you with that because I'm gonna use it. Yeah. Go ahead, 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 go teaching school on the first day. We need a little order so we can complete your first day. Thank you so much for your consideration. No, no. Thank you, Representative. All right. You can finish up your time. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going through, but I, I, I'm going through the amendments, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm going through the rule changes, and you know, you know I'm going to have a problem with them because it, it kind of hurt me a little bit. Hey, I, I think y'all call these John Rogers rules, right? Hey, y'all... <laughs> I felt like that. Hey, 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 I feel it. Hey, hey, I feel like they were hating at me, really. But, but I guess they weren't because of the fact that I still know where. It, 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 you, I still got a way to get around most of them anyway. So, so, cause I think I remember a lot of old rules way back. I can bring it back in. Y'all, y'all forgot the chain. So, but. Well, there's certainly no one would question your your knowledge, Mr. Rogers. But, hey, <laughs> well, or, okay. or your sense of style either. So uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm okay. I, it, it just uh, I I see what you're trying to do, and and uh, and I'm against most of the changes on anything on rule because I figure that what you're doing is that you 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 try to streamline the process. I get that, but you haven't closed every loophole, and 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 and, and I'm glad you didn't. Uh, uh, but I want to ask you one question, and that especially on the one about the um, I've got so much paper they gave me, gave me everybody gave me paper to look at it. Take my question about uh, if uh, you still got that any one member can vote no on local constitution and make it go statewide, right? That you could vote to to repeal the local courtesy when we do that vote, and that with the changes we've made, I don't that would not change. So, so if you've gone through the process, cost you money, then we vote on the CA, and then do the local courtesy, then then that's where that would fall. I you you change the uh, foreign privilege to three minutes, right? Foreign privilege privilege down down three minutes now, right? What's that? Portal prison privilege down to three minutes. Gentlemen's time is up. Yeah.
I, I got some. I, I, hey, I, these are serious questions I'm asking. I just want to know. Okay. okay. Hey, anybody else got any? I'm, I'm going. Chair sure recognizes Representative Moore from Jefferson County. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentlemen, you yield. Yes, ma'am. And and I'm making reference to uh, Rule 23, Amendment 23, uh, that I talked to you in the past about. Yes, ma'am. Uh, because I'm still I still have some concern. When on this part that says that, um, let me get down to um, after one, the part that say by greater of two members or 20% of the members of a delegation that has a standing, you know, and, and I've, I've talked to you about how we already have problems within our delegation, but if something should get out, then this 20% this still can come to the floor and still contest that bill. And, and my concern is, is keeping that at one person and deleting that part of the uh, amendment out altogether. And that's the amendment I'd like to, to bring, that we would delete that part of it. Well, like I said at the beginning, any of these rule changes, we're trying to find ways to be more efficient, more transparent. Right. And we looked at the, the local legislation steps. That's a that's a touchy one. Ever got 58 counties that do not have a delegation. Oh, we do. County uh, that have their own standing committee. Right. So how you balance that with with a committee? You've got a chance to debate that in that committee, work through that legislation. And it can be voted up or now by that committee, and then you can you can challenge that bill if you can get. We we talked about the best way of the process, where if you get at least two people or twenty percent, which is greater. That's once it gets to the floor. So that's right. That's, it. You, that's where you could you could take it and um, and challenge that bill from within the delegation where where. If outside the delegation, it would take 11 people. Well, my, my concern is why would 11 people outside of my delegation want to hold up something that has absolutely nothing to do with them? Well, right now, one person and, could. But with this, one person may just be a personal issue that they're trying to work through with another so this, member. This is this to make it 11, meaning that if there's 11 people will sign on to that, then there's an issue that we need to have further conversation. Well, I, I can foresee with Jefferson County that we can have 11 people that would join in together to uh, contest a Jefferson County bill. And, and we know historically in this chamber that that's a possibility for that to happen. So whether it's one or 11, that possibility always stand here when it relates to certain delegations within the body. So this doesn't make it, it appears as though it would make it more difficult, but not necessarily so for certain delegations. You know, uh, Jefferson County is a unique uh, delegation, and, and there have been times when you could pick those 11 people across this body that would stand against something that's coming out uh, that would that would benefit Jefferson County and specifically the city of Birmingham. So I, I, I you know, it just this whole list, these two sections of Rule 23 caused me a lot of concern, even with the two or the 20 percent of it, like in our delegation, that 20% might be three or four people. Well, when you look at how we're designed by way that they have wronged the district, and Jefferson County, even though it could stand to have all of its members to live in Jefferson County, but because of past practice, we have four members drawn in. So that's, it, 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 it creates a situation, and historically, you know, you hear across the chamber that Jefferson County is always at odds with each other because even with this modification to the bill, it doesn't help us 
to be able, those of us that actually live in the county, it doesn't help us to be able to pass legislation that would directly impact the citizens that we represent in Jefferson County. And that's why it causes me so much concern that we've got both, both of these sections in Rule 22, 23, even though it appears to be better, but it's not better for us. Well, you stated a while ago, we both agree that one person, Francis, I shouldn't be able to hold up what you're doing in Jefferson County Nor by myself. Left. Yeah. So, so if I organize a 10 more people that will make that stand, that establishes a little bit of a slowdown of that process to give that bill a little bit more of, a, of an observation. And, and the two, I mean, the 20 percent, I understand that you were trying to bring that in alignment with what you do with the consent calendar. Is that is that was why that came apart? That's the 20 percent of the delegation that can that can contest it. And repeat your question, Ms. Moore. I was saying that this part that deals with two members or 20 percent of the members of a delegation that could contest. Um, how did how, how did that come about? Well, we looked at the makeup of all the different, we've got delegations with five, and I think you've got 17. Right. So it'd be hard to arbitrarily just state a number, and where you could say two in a, a delegation that's as big as five, but with yours, that's not many people. So to be fair in that understanding with the representation based on population, based on members of the delegation, that 20% or two, the greater of those, hits where it keeps each committee roughly the same treated with those that are not those 58 individual counties that don't have a standing delegation. That way they would all be treated similarly to how that's outlined. Okay, let me go back because I, I, I think I might could almost digest that, but the, the 11 members, you know, even with 11 under one is, I, I don't think that somebody should be able outside to contest your local legislation, period. I would like to have that language just deleted. Well, I understand your question, and I, I agree with that one person should not be able to, because that that could be a personal issue that someone may have with another legislator. But could or, we reword or that? that? But to 11, you're getting to a point where think, it's a real conversation. Do it, you think that we could override that one person by putting some language in that the body has the opportunity to override that one? Well, you think you, that you that would work? The body has like the opportunity because if, if it if it gets here, goes through the process, gets picked I'm, to the floor, then the body can vote for the passage of that bill. Or fail them. But I'm saying for the bill, one person to contest that for that one person that might live outside of a, a county that's coming in, like, you know, the problem was with one person doing it. But even if that one person did it, rather than to change it to say it, you take it up to 11. What about some wording that if one person put in a contest on another county's legislation, that the body itself could override that one person's uh, uh, protest? Uh, you think that we could accept some language like that? Well, I know. Because that would I'll solve the problem. It would keep the one from being able to contest another county uh, legislation. Well, I understand what you're saying. I think putting a number like 11 as a minimum would do the same thing. Well, I can see us. I've seen it in the past. Sure. That's why I would rather if we could stop that one by saying that the body could override that one by a certain percentage of the body voting to override that one person. And that would take care of the problem that we're trying to address. Sure. Well, we put a lot of thought in this to try to think of what would be equitable and fair for all. But did you come up with that? But no, I did anybody like put that on there? We're just trying to eliminate another step. So that would create a step needed where but it would be, be, be a step, step there, but it would be a step toward government to keep one person from dipping into 
another delegation's business. Well, that's exactly what this rule of 11 would do, and but if, we agree on that. But if we could just, with the one, if we could come up with an amendment to say that by a vote of the body, it could override that one person's contest of another delegation's bill. Well, I'm, I think the, the 11 is a better Well, number. I know 11 can I, happen. I our consent count. So you have to look at us from Jefferson County, and we're trying to consider the different scenarios. Gentlewoman, time has expired. Thank you. Put my light back in. The chair recognizes Representative Jackson. I thought it was just going to finish override the warrant. Yeah, it looked like a real speaker up there, but uh, that's the invitation. Thank you for the recognition, Mr. Speaker. I want, Mr. Speaker, I just want to ask if the gentleman will yield. Yes, sir, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, of rules, how proficient are you in this process? Uh, clarify your question, please. If the proficiency of your change in these rules, to, to what effect will these rule changes be pro, proficient to the, the governing body and to the process well, like I said in the beginning, any rule change or rule elimination or rule addition started with the goal of adding transparency, adding efficiency, and updating any potential outdated processes that we may have. It's something every four years that voted on, you're well aware of. You voted on this many times, and, and, and the changes, these are the ones that we feel like were uh, worthwhile addressed to try to make us better servants for the people we represent. Yes, sir, I hear you very well, but if it ain't broke, why you try to fix it? Now, when it comes to, I, 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 I heard the situation there with, 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 with the Rule 23 as it relates to local delegations and how, how, how people get involved in the process. Now, these people, there used to be a time in this body where we had, when you, when you had a local courtesy, local courtesy was that I didn't get involved in your, in your, in your, in your local stuff and you didn't get involved in mine. Now, what happened to that? I mean, that, that was a good rule, and it's still a good rule. And there's still all that applies, but Representative Jackson walks in with a constitutional amendment, local constitutional amendment. Well, everybody has to vote on that. You're asking since, for that courtesy since, to vote since, for it. It's the three people got to vote on a Trump. constitutional amendment. And so, even if it's local, six or three people has to vote on it. Amen. So this gives a little bit of transparency, gives some ideas of where we're looking at to make sure of what we're voting on, on a constitutional amendment. Oh, you mean all this time we've been voting on trans on constitutional amendment and one in transparency? Um, people that, didn't know what they were voting on? More transparency. So another step. Transparency to where we can look into the issues and find it. Uh, a little more, a little more uh, uh, the debacle in the, the process. I'm Put, putting in a few process. people hand rather than letting the, the, the duly elected people represent their constituents. Now I'm, I'm, I'm through with that one. I, I just want, <laughs> I, I just want to say a couple more things. I'm, I'm, you just wanted to visit. I we, we're on the same state. page when it comes to, you know, I, I believe in, in transparency. Yeah. I, I believe in, in the open process. I believe in integrity. I believe in, 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 in doing what is right because it's right to do it, not because of what somebody's going to think about it or how people are, are going to react to it, but it's right because it's right. And nothing can check, nothing can make right wrong. Right going to stand. Am I right? Right. Now, when it comes to this process, 
You know, and, 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 and it's, not the, it's not the beautiful thing that we see, but my purpose here is to represent the 44, 47,000 people that sent me here. And if you're going to take away my process to represent them with my First Amendment by cutting off debate, giving me an hour to talk, now, uh, and that, that, that rule change shouldn't, 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 shouldn't be any. Now, you want the Second Amendment, I want the First Amendment. And I don't think you ought to be using your authority to take away my First Amendment rights. We, 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 see, when it looks at, look at the big picture, and we got an hour and you got 105 people here and you don't have but an hour to, I don't even get a chance to get to the floor. My light be on, I come in in the morning, turn my light on, and sometimes three o'clock, four o'clock in the afternoon, right before uh, we, we want to adjourn, we might listen and then you have to come back tomorrow and start all over again. So I, that's the process. But when you do, when you limit debate to just an hour, even 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 the Senate motions or, or messages, I think we're we're diluting instead of enhancing the process. We're taking away the, the people's rights, and we all of us got elected by the people, and we should have that opportunity to represent the people that elected us. And so there's a lot of other things in these rule chains that I, that I don't really go along with, Mr. Speak, but, but I, I'm here as a body, as a part of this body. And I'm not, I'm not here filibusting, but I just want to know that some things, some, what, some things that are working well, you leave them alone, you know. You don't, you don't, you don't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so I'm just going to say that, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yield the rest of my time because I, I see now that it, it, it's starting off to a, a very rocky day on the first day of, of this session to organize this house with this great these rule changes. Uh, I think and being on the morning, uh, and being on the, on the super minority, it, it kind of, you know, put another little uh, vexation in me, but I'm, 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 we, I'm your friend. Oh, I think it's a great day. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Jackson. And we work together, and we're going to continue to work together, but don't take away my First Amendment right. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen. The chair recognizes Representative Clark from Mobile. Uh, Clark from Mobile. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Will the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. Representative Lover, and I in particular would like to talk to you about Rule 14A1. Yes, ma'am. What's your question? So let, let's discuss this a bit. What, what is the intent of this proposed rule change? Well, the Referment to another committee by the speaker, uh, just to kind of review back through, require the speaker to find the bill encompasses another subject requiring additional considerations by another committee before referring to the bill to another committee, require any amendment adopted in the first committee to be engrossed and sent to the second committee. The reason, you, you've seen this, we had one bill I know of last year that had some judiciary compliments, had some health compliments, and the speaker sent it to those dual committees, and this just codifies that if there's a bill that has that complication, sorry, Mr. the speaker, speaker has the right to be able to do that. Mr. Speaker, I'm having a terrible time here. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank the, you. What that would do is make it where we're already doing this process. It codifies that process from the speaker's office that if a bill qualifies enough understanding to multiple subject areas, such as if it has a judicial component, has a education budget component, it can align to where it would go. And how that would flow is it would go to one committee. They would debate it, work on that, add amendments if needed, strike things from it. 
and then it would come engrossed and go out engrossed and be adopted by the potentially adopted by the second committee and then they would make any changes that they felt like needed to work from their side and then it would roll out of that to the whole body and so if there's any changes from that first committee then at the floor that's the can still be addressed and, and brought back up and this the, can only take place if a bill has received a favorable report in the first committee. Correct. If a so, bill died in the first committee, can it be re-referred? Be, well, it'd be up to the speaker. Any bill could be re-referred at, at any time at, currently. So if a bill could cycle back. So, so if I'm defeated in committee, then I need to go whine to the speaker and see if I can't get him to refer it to another committee. Run, it, run into that. We, we've had one bill that I know of in my time here where it went to judiciary first and, and then it went to health. So so this was something that will rarely be used. It'll just codify us the ability to be able yeah. to do that from the speaker's okay. office and his allocation. And, and the language in there is just to make it, we didn't want to create a ping pong effect where one committee would pass something. That's what I'm at, that's why I'm asking. And they go back to this committee. This way, this committee looks at it, does the work they feel they need to do. This committee looks at it, does the work they feel they need to do. And then it goes to the body and then the full debate. That way you don't have that ping pong back and forth for, between two committees. So, so how often do you think this might happen? Do, do you imagine that, that, that the average bill now is gonna have to clear two committees? Now, I, I've been here six years and I can only think of one bill right off hand that has done that. And that was the medical cannabis where it had a judiciary component then had a health component, and each committee got to look at it in their specified area and, and make the input to it. I think it was a great process for a complicated issue, brought up a lot of terms, and, and I, I think it's, uh, it's a great tool for the, the ever complicated and, and extremely uh, questions asked type bill where we're trying to answer. We may not have all the answers. We're trying to make sure we ask all the correct questions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Speaker, at the proper time, I have an amendment. It's a simple amendment. I don't know whether it's time. To, I, I don't know how we are. We're going to vote on this. The resolution as a whole, or are we going to take it proposal by proposal? Clerk will save amendment. Amendment to House Resolution and number five, Representative Clark. You have to give, give that amendment. Gentlelady Keir to explain the amendment. Yes, Mr. Speaker. And so on page nine, line 214, at the beginning of the line, insert the following the word written. And on page nine, line 217, after the word committee, insert the following, a copy of the written determination upon request shall be provided to any member making the request. Mr. Speaker, Ms. Clark, we don't have line numbers on our current copies. We'll, we'll look and see where that plays in, if, if General Lady will. I'm a patient lady. I got five more lines. Yeah. Come back when you come back in, Jim Paul, it will go. Yeah, it's over. If you only would just explain the intent of the amendment, just so we have an understanding, the uh, that's a that's a I guess the authority of the speaker, what would be the reasoning for that written to be provided? The, the purpose of it is just full transparency. Mr. Chairman, I don't I know about you, but I've received a number of emails from constituents who are quite concerned about the proposed changes in the amendment. And I'm trying to ensure them that 
This is by no means an attempt to shut them out of the process. Sure, absolutely. And, and like I said, transparency and efficiency is the goals of all these rules. So, so just one second while I review it as it plays in there. Yeah, Thank I don't you. have a problem. Okay. Thank the lady for the time while we reviewed it, and uh, Mr. Speaker, we've deemed this a favorable amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Levin views the amendment as a friendly amendment. It's a friendly amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Clerk will unlock the machines. We'll record the vote. Clerk will lock the machines and record the vote. Oh. 103 ayes, zero nays, the amendment passes. Chairman Lover. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If no other question, I move for adoption as amended. We'd like to do that. We've got a few more lines on. They won't talk to you a little bit more, Joe. Uh, Representative Moore, Jefferson. Mr. Speaker, can I uh, come back later to head and finish my amendment? Yes, ma'am, you can. Appreciate that. The chair recognizes the lady from Jefferson, Ms. Van. Ready. Sure, recognizes the gentlelady from Jefferson County, Representative Moore.
Gentle lady recognized. Joe. It stopped talking. Uh, oh, they, no, and it, and it flip up and it's called the thing. So it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like that. What a cult. The old dog, the old dog can't do it.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Due to technical difficulties, I yield my time. Thank you, Representative. The chair recognizes Representative Hall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Would the gentleman yield? Yes, ma'am. I was hoping by the time I got here, you had worked through, um, what is it, 23, Rule 23. Um, it, uh, it appears that we're still where we were, we came in. Yes, ma'am. So let me give an example of what I experienced with the, with the um, change that you have presently. I was... In my delegation, there was an, another member of my delegation who, at the request of someone in his district to come over to um, annex them into the county. That was not what the people in that area wanted. I was the lone member out of seven who uh, it impacted. And after meeting with my delegation, now one person, I was the only person because the rest of the individuals didn't, it didn't really bother them. And it was, if I had not had that opportunity as one person, that action would have taken place out of, five, out of seven people. And I still think it is important for an individual if they're in that situation that they should have the right to have take that action. There have been other times I've been the lone in member of my delegation being opposed to something, and it gave us an opportunity to come together. And I can say today in my delegation, that has not been a challenge for me because our delegation worked well together. If I say I'm opposed to something, they're going to say, we're going to work with you to see if we can get it resolved, or it doesn't come. That is not. That is rare, and, I, and I'm, I'm honored to serve in a delegation that allows that. That may not be the case, and if it's personal, that's something totally different. And it appears that what we're doing here is trying to deal with a personal issue versus the right of the individual to represent their delegation. Does that make sense to you? I see what you're saying, and you're right. You do have a great delegation, Ms. Hall, and I'm sure you're well respected, as of course, in that delegation, and rightfully so. The the fact of what we're trying to do here is not it's not targeted at a person. It's trying to trying to administer the best way for us to move through legislation, even if that one person can't hold it up. There's a lot of communication, as you're well aware, that leads up to that point for in your example the annexation those are very touchy for 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 us to deal with there's several steps along the way but we talked with delegations that have standing committees of what would be fair no matter what side of the political aisle you're on for us to move through legislation for the greater good of that county that's dealing with legislation we didn't make it 25 percent we didn't make it half that had to be we just i wanted to make it 25 percent if we're going to do that uh, but what we did was make it 20 percent or two the greater of those two just so there's an impact of a little more of having to work together whatever that issue is to come together to have that uh, contest of that local bill so as as you're well aware the debate goes on even if it moves past that step and this will allow for our, our delegations to have those standing committees to where they won't run into a situation. You are working in good faith with what you were doing. If someone's not working in good faith in there, it would prevent them from holding up the entire legislation process for that contest in the bill. It would have to be a, a joint effort in, a, in the larger delegations. So, if you represent, that's 58 of our counties do not have a legislature. And I, I will say to you, I had no idea that we had 58 out of 67 counties that do not have their individual delegation at two or three. That, 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 makes, that makes a little sense to me. Yes, ma'am. I, I mean, I, that was something I learned. I was not aware of that. 
I can see um, where that would be a challenge. The other part of it is those 11 individuals that you rally outside. I just see that opening up a can of worms that you are not ready for. If you, if I go, because if somebody rallies me or anyone else and they sign on that saying they're in contest, then you've got somebody angry at someone else because they got into their uh, local business. I see that as a challenge as well. You don't see that? Well, I see it more of a solution than a challenge because right now I could by myself meddle straight into your business in Madison County and contest your local bill. Presently. Uh, presently. Yeah, but I can also stop you when you come down the road on something else as that's, well. That's right. That's part of the, this great process. That's why there's two microphones here. That's why everybody's got a vote button. The fact of making that to 11, where if one, there's one person, then you may have a personal issue going on or they're trying to leverage one piece of legislation. But if you've convinced 10 other people to vote with you, then you have an issue that deserves further conversation. So where did 11 come from? That's roughly 10% of the body. Plus that was number already existed with our consent calendar, our current rules. So we tried trying to align things that make sense that are equitable in how we look at the numbering system. And so uh, I, I, I'm excited about that rule because the fact that you can't have one person doing that where they're meddling into, if there's a big issue, if someone's doing something in a in a in a county that is a bigger issue involving the entire state, then that's when you get a collective of people that could stand together to to work together. Right now, it's just one, and making it eleven means it's a conversation that still needs to continue on. I'm right. I'm excited about that. I, hear. I think it helps us all. I I hope you're right. Right. So my other issue. Yes, ma'am. The length of time for speaking on the calendar from to 30 minutes. You know which one I'm talking about with rule. Totally. So now, You're talking about just on the standard calendar conversation? Sure, yes. It's still, it's still we left it an hour. Why did I see? Where did I see thirty minutes? You you might have seen my hopes it would go to thirty minutes. Oh no, you that was not your hopes. Surely you were telling I, me I wear, that was not. Tell me that was not coming from your heart. Somebody convinced you to do well, that. I mean, we could we could sit down. No, no, and talk no, just no, as no. Easy you don't. That thirty okay. minutes, but I I missed that. So it is gone. It is back to an hour. Back to an hour. Yes. I want to say thank you. You're welcome. Because I was going to stand here for a while and talk about that one hour, that hour. But I want to say thank you because, and I ask you to just think each time that you all think about that kind of legislation because it impacts the minority. We, that that we, it, I mean, we don't have to show up and you still can conduct business. So, you, but you don't want to do something. I feel that you didn't want to do anything that was going to be. Uh, negatively impacting the people that are trying to represent it, um, do their representation as well. So I will say thank you. And the rest of the stuff I'll leave alone. Then if you're going to, well, you'll get me to go back to my seat. Well, that's an accomplishment in itself, Ms. Hall. <laughs> and I'm honored to have you here. All right. Well, and I appreciate thanks. your questions and comments. Thank you. Okay. Chair, thanks the gentle lady. Ms. Speaker, I move to adopt as amended. The question is moved for the adoption as amended. All those in favor, vote aye. Those opposed, vote nay. If clerk unlock the machines and record the vote. Clerk will lock the machines, record the votes. 79 ayes, 24 nays. The resolution passes as amended. Famous speaker, members of the body.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, the chair calls on Representative Carnes for a moment of personal privilege. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we've been moving fast and furious, and one of the things that uh, we're doing for Jefferson County delegation is we're having a meeting in room 418 tomorrow at 12 noon. That is room 418 tomorrow at 12 noon. You have got, already got a written confirmation of that, but I wanted to make sure everybody got it from the floor here. Thank you very much. I have another point of personal privilege, Representative Standage. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I just wanted to announce and remind our rural caucus members, that's the rural caucus that we'll meet as soon as we adjourn today. We'll meet in room 206. Thank you. I think that's room 200, Representative. 200 is my understanding, yes, sir. Is it changed? Changed? Okay. Room 200. Clerk will call the Senate messages. Message from the Senate. Mr. Speaker, the Senate has originated and adopted the following House, uh, excuse me, Senate Joint Resolution. The same, sir, and saying the same here's with to the House of Representatives for its consideration. Senate Joint Resolution number six, adopting the joint rules of the two houses of the legislature. The chair recognizes Chairman. Lovern, for explanation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. SJR 6 from the Senate is our joint rules, and I'm happy to report there are minimal changes, and I'll read through some of those. There's no new rules, no repealed rules, and technical changes. Rule 10, the order of the reference to clerk or secretary is revived for consistency with other references in the rules. Rule 15, references to the Constitution are updated to reflect the newly adopted Constitution of Alabama of 2022. Conference committee is put in lowercase to read conference committee. And Rule 25, references to the, new, the Constitution are updated to reflect the newly adopted Constitution of Alabama of 2022. The only substantive change summarized is 21B, currently provides that a one-hour notice be given for committees on conferences to meet. The proposed change would provide that one-hour notice requirement for conference committees to meet must be given whenever possible. If no, no question, Mr. Speaker, move for adoption. Chair recognizes Representative Hall from Madison. Thank you, Mrs. Speaker. I'm sorry, I didn't understand a word you said. So what are we what is what are we doing? Yes, ma'am. There's no real subtle to changes. There's just some lowercase lettering uh, on some things and updated clerk or secretary on a couple rules. But the only change that truly affects a rule that I believe you'd were would be a good concern about is 21B, where it changes from one hour requirement for a conference committee, it's one hour whenever possible. So, when I, oh, so instead of a definitive one hour, right. that's For, the only rule change. Yes, ma'am. And, and I've got the summary right here. And um, I can get a copy. Thank you. Chair, sure, thanks, lady. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks, Ms. Hall. And uh, no further questions. Move for adoption. I think that's the question. The question for the body is adoption of SJR 6. Those in favor will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no. The clerk will unlock machines. Members shall vote.
Clerk will lock machines, record the votes. 103 ayes, zero nays. The resolution passes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the body. Message from the Senate. Mr. Speaker, the Senate has originated and adopted the following Senate joint resolution and sends same herewith to the House of Representatives for its consideration. Senate joint resolution number one, committee appointed to notify the governor the legislature is in session. All in favor say aye. All opposed say nay. Motion carries. Message from the Senate, Mr. Speaker. The Senate has originated and adopted the following Senate joint resolution. It sends same herewith to the House of Representatives for its consideration. Senate joint resolution number two, convening of a joint session. All in favor say aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Mobile, Mr. Pringle. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I move that we stand in adjournment and reconvene on Wednesday, January 11th, 2023 at 1 p.m. We heard the motion. All in favor? We stand adjourned. <laughs>